Hey guys, thanks for clicking on this video. Today we are going to be talking about the Tamron 28 to 200 f2.8 to 5.6 lens. For this video, I've divided it into two parts, one for photography and one for videography. Towards the end, I will give you my conclusion, but I'll give you guys a hint. I think this lens is more of a video lens than it is a photography lens. In this video, there will be a part where we just showcase the general usefulness of this lens as a walk around lens and as well as how it does with portraits and then on the second part of the video it will be showing you what it can do as far as video now i use my a7r2 which kind of has the dated autofocus system it still did great at tracking my friend's kids and it'll also show you a preview of what it looks like when you are at different focal lengths and as well as different distances from your subject anyways without further ado here is the video
So one of the things I really like about this lens is the fact that it is a 2.8. You can still blow out the background if you want to at the 28 millimeter end. But I don't necessarily recommend this for photography. Not unless you are just looking for a walk around lens, then I do recommend this lens. But for portraiture, I think there are better lenses out there. I think any 50 millimeter with an f1.8 or lower aperture can beat this lens as far as portraiture goes. But for the versatility of this lens, it is a no brainer for videographers. So I get to be a filmmaker as my job. And one of the things that really gets annoying sometimes is packing too many lenses. Now with this lens, I think I can manage to just be satisfied with the results that I'm getting. The range of this lens and the aperture that it gives you is still manageable. It's still better than some of the other zooms. Now you can see that this lens is way smaller than the 24 to 70 GM lens and that only reaches 70 mil. And not to mention that this lens is way lighter. So if I was traveling, I would definitely just take this lens. It covers a lot of the focal range that I will use and it still gives you that full frame look. I know that people are going to disagree on this one with me, but a 5.6 on a GH5 is not the same as a 5.6 on a full frame. Yes, they may be similar in the value of light, but the look that you get from a full frame 5.6 is different from a 5.6 that you get on a micro four thirds system. Just saying. I know some of you might be discouraged about the f2.8 to 5.6 aperture and that's understandable. I think I definitely would like this lens even more if it was a 2.8 constant aperture lens but I think the price would be one ridiculous and two this lens would be a lot heavier and bigger. Now even though it's not a constant aperture I still appreciate this lens for what it is. One of the things I really like about this lens is the fact that it's sharp all throughout its focal range. In the video, I shot this lens wide open just so that you could see how sharp this lens is. The autofocus of this lens is amazing. I did, like I said, put it on my a7R2 and that's kind of an older autofocus system and it did just fine. And when I put it on my a61 or a7R3, it even performs better. I think all in all, I recommend this lens for videographers and for those people that want to have an all-purpose lens. However, I don't recommend this lens for portraiture just because there are so many other lenses out there that can outperform this lens. As a filmmaker myself, I know that I'm going to be using this lens a lot. I'm really excited to be able to use this on my future projects just because I don't have to carry multiple lenses with me going out on shoots. Anyways guys, thank you for listening and watching the video. I hope this helped you figure out if you want to buy this lens or not. If this helped you, please like and subscribe. If you have any tips, comments on how I can improve my filmmaking and my YouTube channel, please leave it in the comments down below. And again, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys around. Peace.